It won't wash, you know. What won't? You, being the dutiful daughter all of a sudden. You're always moaning that I don't pull my weight. Well, it pulled boys all right. I mean, how could you? What have I done wrong? Gallivanting on a bed with a gang of yous. Are you jealous? Yeah, that's great, Kelly. You're not going to be pulled in by all this, are you? I've told her. What? Not to have more than one boy at a time? It wasn't like that. You got caught. Let me deal with this, Viv. You? Me. Right. What was going on? I've told you. Nothing. Well, it didn't look like nothing. That's right. Don't believe me. Look, don't get out of your pram, but the last time you said nothing was going on, you were off with your teacher. I knew you'd throw that in my face. Well, I'm sorry. I thought you'd be pleased I was with people of my own age. Well, I am. I just don't want them. I'm really sorry. I know I was stupid. I need to go where Lynn and Roy started. Yeah, oh, come on. You're really brilliant, Dad. Yeah, I know. No harm done, eh? Smells good. Olivian. Mmm, it's nice. No offence, but if you're in the coffee mornings all of a sudden, I'm sure the vicar organises things along those lines. I've got work to do before the meeting. Come in, Zoe. What's going on, Chris? Would you like some of Steve's rather excellent coffee before we start? I've got calls to make. Oh, it's Bolivian. What's going on? I'd a guess I'd say your brother's convened an alternative director's meeting. Won't take long. No. I'm not getting involved in your war of attrition with Kim. This isn't personal. <laughs> of course it isn't, Chris. I'm not listening to this. I'll see you later. So it's all right that Kim risks our money on Alex Oakwell's nags just to impress him? I'll listen to the arguments at the meeting, then I'll decide. That's what it's there for. Just whose side are you on? Whose do you think? How do you feel? Guilty? You know, losing contact with Mum, now she's gone. It'll be over soon. I'm just glad that Jack's coming with me. I don't think I could cope on my own. Well, we've organised things here, so you can both stay as long as it takes. Well, we won't get there at this rate. You always get so irritable before a long drive. Hey, don't I get a kiss? Bye, Robert. Be a good lad. See ya. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Got a pen I could borrow? I think I should warn you, you aren't going to get this crackpot scheme of yours past the board. That's very considerate. So why don't you back out? Maybe. But I think we should discuss it formally, don't you? Let everybody have their say. Did you hear what I said? It's called democracy. What are you doing? I stepped in something. That's my pen. <laughs> Cheers. That's better. Now you can take the minutes of the meeting. Ah, let's hear them then. Your excuses. For what, Mr Tate? You know full well your behaviour in that chalet. Look, uh, we're sorry about that, Chris, and what happened again? We're only having a sex orgy. With him? What do you mean, what's up with me? We couldn't find anyone better. Well, uh... Don't let it happen again. At least not on our property. Certainly not with him. <laughs> Very funny. It's not funny, Roy. You're supposed to be responsible. If you can't handle it, I'll find someone who can. Now clear off. Could I talk to you, Mr. Tate? Well? I wanted some advice. Ah. So you've come to me. I'm very sorry about what happened, Mr Windsor. It's very embarrassing. Yes, it would be. What, being caught with your pants down? They didn't get that far. It, it wouldn't have gone that far either. I really like Kelly. I, I respect her. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it, son, because I get very protective about my daughters. She went up with a teacher. I know. Will you belt up, Donna? Look, to be quite honest, I'm pleased she's seeing a lad of her own age. The only other one around here is Roy Glover, and he's as rough as a bear's backside. <laughs> I mean, I know you come from a good family. How's him as baby? 
fine. Why don't you get on and see her? Can I? Well, yeah, she was fed up this morning. I'll take some sweets for the baby. Don't give them to a baby. Oi, I want a word. The boys apologised. I heard, and you ended up nearly marrying them off. Oh, he's a decent lad. He's a lad, a teenage one, the worst kind, and at that age, all they think about is one thing. Don't you? Oh, well, I'll try not to. Uh, will you go and get the pot bottles ready for collection? You embarrassed him. Well, it's no good pretending otherwise. Anyway, it's not just lads of his age. I sometimes think it would be easier if you're all seen to at the age of 12. So do I. So you want to be secretary? I think it might be more interesting than clearing up after stinky holiday makers. It's not all you've been doing up there. I was bored. You want to work in the office? I'd like to give it a try. You'd have to persuade me it was a good idea. How? Most of the young people I interview make out that they're doing me a favour by coming. I'd be dead keen. And as it's such a small office, it's important to get on. I get on better with older people, apart from my mum and dad. You certainly got on with Tom Bainbridge. He exploited me. I'm sure he did. I know you wouldn't do that. Mmm, look at these. Well, we decided to treat ourselves with Jack being away. Thank you. Well, that reminds me, I'm supposed to be covering for Rachel in the wine bar. Would you mind looking after Alice for me? No, of course not. More the merrier. Thank not you. Not without Andy, it's not. Well, I bet you miss him. What would you know? Robert. Well, she's one that's got on to him. That's what made him go. <sighs> Why can't we just do one great big huge shop to get supplies in? We're running out. We're such a success. But it's not as if I can get all this stuff from cash and carry. I mean, do we have to have fresh shrimps? Half the people around here wouldn't know a fresh shrimp if it jumped up and bit them on the house, your father. I'm sorry? <sighs> just give us a list, will you? Better stick a bottle of pet pills down there for me while you're at it. Andy chose to live with his dad. It's understandable. You're talking about when I came round after Andy hit Alice, aren't you? Robert, what do you think I should have done? Well, everybody was always getting at him. You included. I wasn't. I know you miss him, but he'll be missing you too. <laughs> do you think he will? You're the first proper friend he had. You know, no matter where he's living, he will remember the good times you had together. Like when he called Eric Pollard an old goat. Hey, I heard that, Sonny. <laughs> Did it hurt? What? What do you think? Having a baby? Can't remember. But it did. Why don't you try it? No way. I don't blame you. My mum said it shouldn't be allowed. Everyone says that. But you said no, didn't you? She's gorgeous. She's all right. She's all little and clean. She's not gorgeous when she screams and has a smelly bum. You don't think about that, then. You are glad you've got her, though. I don't know. Hey, come on. This house is supposed to be something positive for us all. It's not the house, is it? It's that blasted assignment you went on. The money will just about keep the Dingles in beer for a week. It cost a mate his life. I mean, what is it for? It's for the kids. That's all it can be for. Anyway, we're going to have a really nice time tonight. What's tonight? The complimentary meal you've been offered in the wine bar. Oh, that'll really take me out of myself. Being attended to by that oily little spear, very pollard. <laughs> you look knackered. Thanks. <laughs> She leading your dance, is she, that day? Mind your own business, will you? <laughs> Thought so. What do you thought wrong? I am my own man. We'll see. Eric, she's got that wine bar buzzing. So whose name is over the door, then? So is hers now. <laughs> you thought that, had you not? Six months time, Eric, there'll be no shift in her. Well, I don't want a shifter. It's a partnership. It's an equal partnership. 
You reckon? Yes, I reckon. Just give me another one, will you? I don't think so, Eric. <laughs> Even human animals need lunch breaks. <clears throat> Not if they have to drive to Skipdale. Oh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, fresh prawns. Shrimps. <laughs> Shrimps. <laughs> For this business to survive, we have got to expand. The days of the country house offering a living to all sorts of retainers are long gone. Do you mean me? I didn't say that. You're the only parasite in this setup. Look, putting petty insults aside, if we can, what better way to grow? With one step, we move into the international arena. Seems too simple. Yeah, well, we're fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time. Now, Alex Oakwell needs a cash injection. We have the wherewithal. So I think it would be foolish not to consider it. What do you think, Steve? What's the point in asking him? He'll go along with it because he's a chancer. His home and what his family's built up is not at stake. It means no more to him than a game of five-card brag with Seth Armstrong. He probably thinks he'll give thanks in your usual way. No doubt he'll be right. I'll take that as a vote against. I'm afraid mine is too. There's no need for us to fall out over this. I don't know what your game is. Calm down, will you? How dare you tell me what to do? I thought you respected my judgement in business. This isn't about business. This is about schoolboy jealousy. You still haven't come up with a convincing reason why he's so desperate for a partner. I'll tell you why. Because he's not a businessman. So why risk everything? Because I can run a business. There would be no risk. And with your backing... Look... I know Alex Oakwell, some laid-back minor aristocrat with an estate that's crumbling all around him. But he knows he needs us. We could have used that. You do like him, though? Well, of course I like him. He's a charming man. No more than that. Am I that important to you? That you jeopardise the deal? I don't know. I think you do. Get over here and grab hold of this. You should be doing it. I was having a meeting with Chris. Ooh, Chris. What are you sucking up to him for? I wasn't. And what were you doing then? Discussing my career prospects. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you won't have any if you don't get this lot sorted out. You're power mad, you are. No, it's just that I get it in the neck, don't I, if not gets done. Well, I could have a word with Chris if you like. If he'd listen to you. He thinks I might be secretary material. Honest. Yeah. Well, we all know what that means, don't we? Fair eyes. He's just a dirty old man. You're just a dirty young one. What's the difference? Zoe? No, not for me, thanks. It's a pity we haven't got any champagne. Don't you think Kim's proposal had some possibilities? Oh, no. Not now, it doesn't. We've done the most positive thing we could. Slap her down. Not let her ride roughshod. Come on, we're back in the driving seat. I suppose so. What's up? Oh, I don't know. I don't know whether it's this or work. I can't get excited about either. You're missing Nanny's personal services, aren't you? Don't talk like that. Sorry. You're missing Sophie, though. I'll tell you what. Why don't I take you for a meal at the wine bar tonight? Oh, I don't know. Apparently, Eric's floozies transform the place. OK. We'll have the champagne, then. Did someone mention champagne? Right. Knock off now, Will. Right, thanks, Mr Windsor. Uh, what time does Kelly finish work? Why? Oh, uh, I was just wondering. So, what you got planned for this evening? Anything exciting? I should think you had your fill of excitement after last night's little performance. Oh, we were just planning on going for a family meal. Oh, good. At least your parents can keep track of you. Give the boy a break, Viv. Hiya. Hi. Um, they haven't given you a hard time, have they? Oh, no, not really. Good. Uh, Kelly, I was just wondering if you fancied uh, going out with me properly. 
I don't think so. What? No. See ya. He's got cheek. He only asked me out. What, after last night? I know. I told him no. Good girl. What would you like? What are you having? Um, it, it feels like I should have a sherry. Two sherries? No, you have a pint. We'll drink to your mum. No one else will be. What way to end up? A deserted graveyard in a strange town. No, you were there for her. I was too late. Three painting. Keep the change. Thank you. Now she made her own life. She didn't want me to be part of it, did she? You know, when Ma moved to Spain, it hurt. Even at my age, I felt she'd deserted me. And then you realise they've got their own life. You're not number one, like when you were a kid. You know, it's not just parents that have to let go. Children do. But if only we could have said that to each other. If only we could have understood each other. You'll be all right. Thanks, Jack. I'm glad I haven't driven you away. It's as if you've rushed off your feet. It's not quite what I imagined when I let Eric in on the partnership. At least she's put a bit of life in the place. Thank goodness I'm only covering for Rachel. I thought you might have gone to the funeral with her, Chris. Why? Is she all right? Yeah, Jack's gone with her. That should cheer her up. Well, someone's in a good mood. What do you mean you've no record of the booking? Well, see here, Mr. Cairns. When did you book? I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. We're full. I didn't book because I received a personal invitation from your husband. Eric? Oh. Yes. We've come for our meal. Ah. Well, made a wise choice. They aren't booked. Oh, sorry, Albine. You invited us. <laughs> now, why would I do a silly thing like that? <laughs> we'll come another time. We will, Blazes. I'm not being fobbed off. Listen, Pipsqueak, when I complained, you offered me a free meal. Did you, Eric? <sighs> I do recall something. It was yesterday. Right, so, Mr. Cairns, you and your family have arrived here for your... Complimentary, free, gratis dinner. Eric! <laughs> oh, come on. We're eating. Well, I didn't expect you to turn up in a peak period. When then? Seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm starving. Mm. Jerry needs changing. Of course you can have your meal. Thank you. Yeah. But you'll have to wait until someone finishes. Mr. Birch, here's your table. It's not a bad hotel. It's nice. <sighs> Drinks are pricey. Oh, it must be my turn. No, I didn't mean... <sighs> it's all right. <sighs> Do you think she knows? The woman behind the bar. Knows what? About the only thing we haven't talked about. You and me. I feel as if the whole world knows, except for Sarah. I despise people that do this sort of thing. Jack, we kissed. But you came to me as a friend, an uncle, more or less. I let that happen. It was only a kiss, and I didn't come as a friend. I came as a woman. It's not right. I don't regret it. Do you? Yes. I don't know. But that's an end of it. <laughs> she 
she does know. <laughs> oh, this is really very good. Shrimps are just like slugs that happen to live in the sea, really. Don't be so damn silly and eat them. You enjoying it, Will? The mother's talking to you. What, sir? The food. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Get a grip of yourself, Lan. I know seafood's supposed to be an aphrodisiac, but... Well, I don't think it needs any help in that direction. I'm only looking. I wish you'd stayed glued to that computer. You only complained when I did. Well, get yourself involved in some physical activities. That's what he wants to do. <laughs> Enough of that, young lady. This is fun. <laughs> you stupid youngster. Tony, Tony. Let's go. <laughs> You're not getting a tip. How gracious. Your wine bill. What? Only the food was on the house, Mr Cairns. We'll leave you to settle up. Come on. <clears throat> it shouldn't take me long to sort out my mum's flat in the morning. I'll give you a call about eight. Night, Jack. Night, night. And thanks. Hiya! Yeah. It's really a buzz in this place, isn't it? I've come to check out local talent. It's about your level. Oi! I got this. It's from Charlie. What did she say? I mean, I got one. You know what the post is like. I'll read it to you then. There's no need. Dear man, it's really brilliant here away from that godforsaken hole. And he you must be obeyed. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Go on. The guys out here are absolutely fantastic. I get the picture. There's one called Rick with the most enormous yacht. Thanks. That'll do. Yacht? The most enormous yacht? About time. <laughs> Mr Cairns is not in a good mood. No, it won't be. When that came over, there were three blokes relieving themselves on his car. <laughs> Why didn't you say? <laughs> yes, then we could have all joined them. <laughs> <laughs> well, give them a big kiss from me. Yeah, oh, tomorrow at midday with any luck. Yeah. No, 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 she's bearing up fine. Yeah. Night, night. You too. This wasn't enough. Come in. 